Hey peeps, it's Jed here from Disrupt Tutoring and as always, it's such a pleasure to join you. Today we're going to deal with some parabolas and with that in mind, let's dive straight in. They've said to us the sketch below represents the graphs of two parabolas, f and g. f of x equals half x squared minus 8, the turning point of g is c, 2, 9, and the y-intercept of g is a, 0, 5, b and d are the x-intercepts of f and g respectively. Right, so... In 6.1, we knew it would come, show that g of x equals minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. What's nice about the examiner here is that they've said to us, they've given us an answer, so we're able to compare whether or not we get to the right answer. Okay, with that in mind, let's dive straight into 6.1. Okay, so let's look, at, let's look at g of x. Okay, g of x is this one over here, and we need to figure out what information we have in order to generate a parab parabola equation. So we can see that we know the turning point and we know one other point on this curve. With that in mind, one type of equation comes to mind. So it's going to be in the form of y is equal to a x minus p squared plus q, where p and q are your, well, is your turning point. Right, so let's plug in our turning point then. So it's going to be y is equal to a and then x your x your p value is going to be 2 so that's going to be minus 2 squared and then your q value is going to be 9 as you can see we've subbed in the turning point in order to generate that now there's one more thing we need to figure out we need to try and get this a into a number value and in order to do that we need to get rid of the x and y and to do that we're going to plug in another point so let's do that so we know of a, so we're going to put point A in, so the Y value for A is 5, A, and then we've got 0 minus 2 squared plus 9. Then we're going to bring that minus 9 across, or the 9 across to become a minus 9, that's going to be minus 4, equals A. The negative 2 squared is going to give us positive 4, so that's going to be times 4. We're going to divide both sides by 4, and the answer here is going to be negative 1 equals A. Right, so now we know what uh, A is, we know what P and Q are, so let's see what we get. So therefore, we know that G of X is going to equal minus X minus 2 squared plus 9, but we're not going to get our answer yet because it's not in the form that they've asked us to solve it for. So let's expand that bracket to get the answer that they're looking for. So we're going to keep this negative on the outside. We're going to keep this negative on the outside, and that's going to give us x squared. We square the last term, and then we multiply the two terms and double them, so that's going to be minus 4x. We close that bracket, plus 9. We then multiply that negative n, which is going to give us negative x squared, plus 4x, negative 4, plus 9. And finally, negative x squared, plus 4x, Minus 4 plus 9 is going to give us plus 5. Is that the answer they were looking for? Yes, it is. So that is a guaranteed couple of marks in the bag. Really nice job. Really, really good job. Moving on to question 6.2. They've asked us to calculate the average gradient of G between A and C. And this is a really nice, simple question to get some good marks for. Okay, so I'm going to write it over here. 6.2. We use our normal gradient formula. So we're going to say, right... The average gradient between A and C is simply going to be Y2 minus Y1. So let's use C as our first coordinate pair. So that's going to be 9 minus 5 over. And then we need to, new, to do X1, uh, X2 minus X1. So we're going to use C again because we use 9 first. So it's going to be 2 minus 0. And that is going to give us 9 minus 5 is going to be 4 over 2. So therefore, our average gradient must be 2. Let's do a quick check. Does that make sense? Well, we can see that it's an upward sloping gradient between the two. And 2 looks around about right. It's not too steep, but it's not too flat. So that gives us a feeling that that must be the right answer. And therefore, we are happy to proceed and grab the marks from the marker. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, especially to our sponsors for making this video possible. Read all about them in the description below. Remember to head over to our website for more of these epic tutorial videos. If you can't find the video that answers your question, send us the question and we'll respond with a personalized video just for you. Until the next time, stay epic.